Hello there, good people. I have accurately predicted the direction of these markets over the last two weeks. I've clearly predicted a breakdown in Tesla, a breakdown in Nvidia, a breakdown in the SPX, and a breakdown in Bitcoin. I'm gonna run through crypto and stocks very briefly today, and I'm gonna show you what I saw and what I see and where I think we're going. But I wanna make it clear, oftentimes I give a path. I give you a line in the sand on various stocks or cryptos. And I tell you that if we open and close beneath that line or open and close above that line, it's going to give us the next direction. I've done that over the last two weeks on some very big plays, big money making opportunities. If you had shorted the rip and bought puts down for the next dip, you would have made a ton of money. This is the Stocks with Josh show. I'm going to go through some big news stories, some big plays, and I'm going to give you guys some clear direction where I think things are going. I will tell you right off the top, I think we're going to get a fake out pump on Bitcoin. It could go as high as 68 to 70,000. But I think that overall, Bitcoin does not right now have the momentum to make a real push higher. And I think that Bitcoin's going to give us a little fake out after this having that it's upon us today. The having's on upon us. And I have made mention of it many times that when we got here, it could end up being a buy the rumor, sell the news, which is unusual because everybody expects Bitcoin to really take off after the having. And so people might be piling in, especially if we get this fake out that I think might be coming. Now, this is simply going to push us back to the top of a descending parallel channel. I've shown you guys that in the past. Now, these types of channels normally do break to the upside, and I believe that we will eventually get a break to the upside on this uh, bullish descending channel, but I think it's not coming this soon. I don't think that Bitcoin has had the chance to consolidate enough to build enough momentum to make the big push that we're hoping to see here later this year. Timing matters, best opportunities to buy matter, and I'm gonna show you where I think Bitcoin may pull back to. I've told you in the past, I'm gonna give it to you right now before I show you the chart. I think that there is an opportunity for us to swing up to 70K based on what I'm gonna call this bull trap having event. And then I think we need to consolidate and pull back all the way to around 55K. And I think after that, I think Bitcoin would have the strength to make its next big pump move. And I think it's going to impact the meme coins. It's going to impact altcoins. And I've got an interesting uh, analyst report on Bitcoin to share with you. Uh, he's saying something very similar. I'm going to share that report. And then I'm going to take you guys into that chart. But we're going to also hit some big tech today. Uh, if you haven't hit the like I would appreciate it if you would, because it will push this video out to more viewers. I have to thank everybody for celebrating the success of this page with me, all the people that jumped on board and finally pushed this page up above 100,000 subscribers. It's a really cool accomplishment, but we are just getting started. You know, I make bold predictions on this page. I'm not coming here and saying, guys, this stock that happens to be going up, well, it might continue to go up. I give you the line in the sands. I'm charting the way. I'm telling you what the charts say before the stock price gets there. I'm not going to get it right 100% of the time, but I think we've got a pretty good track record and we're going to do it again today. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for hitting the like and hit that subscribe to get this type of actionable content on stocks and crypto. And uh, it's going to be a good day. All right, let me share this news story with you guys. Crypto expert predicts a narrative shift post Bitcoin halving. Expectations for Bitcoin. In the short term, Van de Pop expects Bitcoin to experience a relief bounce to around 70K. However, he didn't sound so bullish about the flagship crypto's long term trajectory, predicting that Bitcoin will face a period of consolidation that he doesn't expect to change in the coming months. In another X post, he said, It's waiting game on Bitcoin currently as momentum is relatively gone. He added that he expects Bitcoin to continue the retracement and consolidation while altcoins will bounce up in their BTC pairs during this period. So basically what he's saying is that we are going to see a fake out to the upside, maybe as high as 70K on Bitcoin, and then we're going to go further into consolidation. His logic is actually the same as mine, that we actually had 
created a ton of momentum to get to where we got right at the halving. And then we're still going to have to cool off to get back to a place where we could build momentum and actually go higher for Bitcoin. But in when Bitcoin begins to cool off and goes sideways, that it will give room for some of the alts to run. And he believes there's still greater upside to the alts. He lists his favorite alts. I've given my favorite alts on this page. But let me just let's go into the Bitcoin chart and I'll show you guys what I'm expecting so you can visualize where I think the price action might move over the next couple weeks. All right, guys, we've got all time highs marked in the red. We've got the FIB level beneath that, an area of support all the way down to 50K. I've been telling you that we're in a descending channel, which will ultimately break to the upside. We have broken over today on the halving day, we've broken above the center of that. Typically, when you make a move like that, it's an indication that we might be moving back to the top of the channel. Where is the top of the channel? It's roughly between 68 and 70. And so it does appear that we have the potential of retesting the top of this range, the top of our channel, and getting this potential fake out move up to 70K, which a lot of people are going to imagine is going to continue the breakout move in Bitcoin, not realizing that Bitcoin needs to reset. It's not there, folks. We're in this descending channel. So even if we get back to 68 to 70, we are probably going to pull back to the bottom of this channel. And where do I think that pullback is going to lead us? I believe that later on, probably uh, in another two to three weeks, we're going to see a critical level of around 55K. And I think at that point, we're going to have another couple months of some sideways price action, which will eventually lead to us getting back to 68 and eventually see at that point whether we've reset enough to get all the way to push up to 80 and maybe to 100K later this year. So that's what I see in the charts. I want to remind you guys, Descending channels are bullish. We've got a couple touches here at the top. We've got a couple touches, near touches here at the bottom. Those near touches are not quite touches. I'm expecting a hard confirmation touch around 55 on this channel later. And then at that point, I'm hoping that we will have had enough time to build momentum for a stronger push up. So be aware, don't get caught piling in at around 68 to 70 in your favorite alts and bitcoins. When I'm telling you right now, Josh is telling you that there is the potential for a pullback all the way to 55. Now, do I know for certain what is going to happen? No, I tried to borrow Nancy Pelosi's crystal ball, uh, but she just wouldn't lend it to me. But I'm looking at the charts and that's what the charts tell me. I've given extremely accurate predictions on Bitcoin, the market and some big tech stocks. And so let's see if it happens again. Keep it. I follow the page because you know what? If I'm hitting this stuff right, it, there's a ton of, of content here that can enable you to take risk positions accordingly to make a ton of money. Guys, we are getting it right. And so there's my prediction on Bitcoin. Watch for a fake out move up to 70K and then a true move back to where I think we're going to need to find support, consolidation, digestion of the last four or five months in Bitcoin, which has been ripping. It needs to digest before it can move higher. I think that's going to happen around that 55K mark. We're not breaking and closing above 70K right now on Bitcoin. Uh, you can mark my words, but again, it's not a suggestion for what you should buy, sell, or hold, but this is how I'm trading Bitcoin right now. And on, this is how I'm getting myself positioned in crypto to make big bucks later. Let's move on. Let's get into Tesla and we're going to see what the charts are telling us there. But I'm going to give you guys a quick news story before I do that. OK, guys, you know, the Tesla has been suffering. I just wanted to point out Barclays reiterates Tesla as equal weight. Barclays lowered its price target on Tesla to 180 per share from 225, saying it sees negative catalysts heading into earnings. Their exact quote was facing an investment investment thesis pivot and a sea of uncertainty, this Tesla call is extra highly anticipated. Expect negative catalyst. Guys, I've been telling you the same thing. I just wanted you to see other people say it so that you could get a sense of confluence or a second opinion. But now I'm going to take you into the charts and show you what I see there. All right, guys, I love to keep charting simple. The simpler that you keep charting, the more clearly you're able to see where things are going to go. We obviously had the incredible momentum move breakout from the $15, $25 range 
all the way up to the $415 range. That was the markup phase, guys. From that point forward, we went into what's referred to as a distribution phase. It's when the price action kind of goes back to the top, down to the bottom, back to the top, and that is typically followed by a decline phase. I'm gonna just mark it out here. Then we came down to $100. Now this move up to 400 is what would be considered an overreaction. The move down to 100 is considered an overreaction. We came all the way back up to 300 and that gave us a swing high back in 2023. But now we are experiencing another swing low. I personally believe that we're gonna make a higher swing low, leaving Tesla on an overall trajectory to the upside. I do not believe that it's all crash and burn for Tesla. I think that we are getting the opportunity to buy on a near historic swing low, similar to the $100 price range. I'm guessing that that's going to end up being around 140, and I'm going to get into the daily chart to help us refine the exact price. But my target at the moment is 142 as a potential swing low. So that's where I'm going to be looking to go long. I've made it very, very clear. I believe in the following three months, we're gonna be back to 220, 240. And, and someone might ask, okay, Josh, but why are you saying that it's time to buy uh, when you just told us that everybody is saying that they're gonna have negative catalysts? Guys, that's when you buy. Smart Money knew the negative catalysts were coming here. That's why they sold here, right? They sold here because they knew in the next six months there was gonna be this horrible negative catalyst for the stock and that is when retail will dump and that's when smart money will buy again and they will give the company the opportunity to cut spending, increase profit margins, and they will buy early and that's where we're gonna end back up around 220 or 240 and that's where the next big test is going to be. All right, that's the monthly chart. Let's take a moment and go into the daily chart to refine our exact points of entry and our exact lines in the sand. Okay, on the daily chart, I've been advising and practically begging people to short it at around 177, saying that we were not moving to the upside and we've had a very strong sell-off. We're consolidating around 150, but in my view, I think that that's not the bottom. We're gonna have some bad catalysts at earnings and we're gonna see some heavy volatility at this point, right? Now, I ultimately think that the line in the sand is $146. Now, I do not have that marked on my screen, but 146 is the line in the sand. I'm going to say that that is local support. Now, here's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting that 146 to be broken intraday and a flash down somewhere around 140. But I believe that before the day is over, if it's going to go on the bullish trajectory long term that I'm expecting it to go, we will see it close back above 146. And so the question of whether it will close beneath or close above 146 is going to tell us a lot about the near term move that may be coming on Tesla. The fact that we're here at the bottom of the range testing the uh, green Lux Algo support cloud support the reason why this cloud is in the color green is because this is support you buy support so that you can one day sell resistance up above you got a red cloud that's where resistance is that's where the sellers are waiting to take profit we're down in the green cloud and so between 150 and 140 is where we're going to be looking to take a long position now if we get to 140 142 on a dip personally i believe that there's the potential for a reversal in the near term, back to 160. So a ton of money. If we can pick up some uh, call options here, right above 140, and if it closes back above 146, that's the confirmation that we're gonna at least get back up to 160. Now, how it performs or interacts with the 160 price range will tell us a lot about whether it's time for it to go higher because we may come down to 140 and then we might get that bounce and then ultimately we will see some uh, movement sort of again, potentially like these ascending channels. You, I've always said ascending channels, they're bearish. They break to the downside. Ascending channels, again, up, breaks to the downside. I'm expecting the formation of another ascending channel between 140 and 160, and then we're gonna have to see how it interacts with 160. So I hope that that was clear. We are not out of the woods. Negative earnings catalyst coming likely Tuesday pushing us to 
a key level of support right above 140. Now, there's a lot of different ways in which this could be played between calls, puts, and buying shares, but it's those, it's those lines and trend lines that I've just given you that are going to help you make a ton of money. I'm going to give you updates in the Discord on Tesla because it's heating up. I haven't given a ton of updates on Tesla. I've been giving some, but I'm going to give more in the coming days because the truth is I've just been holding puts long to the downside, knowing that we were getting down here and that that's where the money was going to be made. Now that's going to be switching up between 140 and 146, probably going to take profit on those puts and be watching for the move up. But you guys got the technicals. Let me get into a couple other plays to help you guys out. We're going to go over uh, NVIDIA, which is, which is really showing some clear signs in the charts. And I'm going to cover DJT. Guys, on a video on Larry's page, I did a live and I charted DJT. On that show yesterday, I believe it was, or two days ago, I said unequivocally, the move to the downside in the near term was over, expect a pop. The following day, this thing ripped. My technicals are often pretty darn accurate. If you're paying attention, there's a ton of money to be listening and following, doing your own due diligence and learning how it is that I see these reversals in the charts. I called a reversal for DJT and it bounced and ripped. I'm gonna show you guys in the charts where I think it's going to go because again, in my mind, DJT seems to be extremely clear, but you need to understand I've got to break down and show you the chart so you can see what the green light, the yellow light, and the red light looks like when looking at those charts. So let me take you into that chart and we're gonna move forward from there. All right, guys, so here's what I want you to remember. When I talked about this on Larry's page the other day, I said that we were going to probably uh, have an abandoned baby candle with this candle right here just a couple days ago. So that you're clear, I've got the two day candles on this chart. So each candle you see represents two days in the market. And I'm going to tell you that someone say, well, how did you know to go look at the two day candle, Josh? It's experience. Uh, that's a whole other class. But let's, let me just tell you what it is I see. Okay. You've got this strong red candle move down. I mentioned the other day that we had this, uh, this candle here with a nice little tail on the end. And I said, guys, if we open and close above that candle, we're likely going to get an extremely strong green candle pushing us up. And I said, we are simply oversold. I pointed out from the very top of this move to the bottom of this move, DJT had pulled back 70%. And I said that you should not be buying puts to go lower right? Not right here because a 70% pullback is extremely oversold. And I said, expect a bounce. Now, people that have tried to short at the wrong time have gotten absolutely toasted with DJT. And so I warned everybody time to take profits on any puts that you're in and expect some green candles. Now I'm going to give you guys the line in the sand. This is, these are some of the most important numbers. You can see that it came all the way up to $37. Now, $37 is what I would like you guys to see is structural resistance, okay? Now, if we actually fail here and we get a red candle to open and close beneath $37, then the move down will continue all the way to 18, 18 being the target. However, if we cross above 37 and we open and close above 37, then the area where I think we're going to push up to is all the way between 50 and 58. That's the area where this could easily go back to. So there's also an area right up here, which is a structural area. And you can see that it has wicked into this area before and it has failed here. And so 37 is the line in the sand. Watch for a daily candle that opens above 37. That's an indication that we could be going back up into this zone to test it. Now, personally, I think this would be a great area uh, for me, not for you guys. You guys do what you want to do. But to short uh, this particular play, Wall Street wants companies that are profitable, have low debt, and have increasing profits, and that's not DJT right now. This is pure hype and speculation. This is a meme stock, folks. So I'd be watching for rejection. I've got a little um, rocket ship here pointing down, which means it's that once we get into this zone and we get another wick like this, watch the candles, guys. I tell you a lot. Candles at resistance tell you a lot. So watch for that to happen here. If we open and close above 37, then you short it at 58 to 50. 
for a move all the way down to $18. There'd be hundreds and hundreds of percents of profit to be made doing that with DJT. The charts have predicted where we got. I told you guys what would happen. Now I'm telling it to you again. So don't ignore the technicals. That's what they're telling us is potentially going to happen. And that line in the sand, $37. But this is a play that largely you want to be shorting at the right place. And that could potentially be a short opportunity up at 50. If it never gets there, then and the candle opens and closes beneath 37, then we're going to short it all the way down to 18. But there's higher risk there because remember, it had already come down 70%. Things take time to swing, right? We, are, we swing up all the way to $80. It's going to take a few movements for it to swing back to its lows. But ultimately, I am predicting with DJT that it will swing back to those lows because forget who's behind it. Forget what the company does. It's all about the money, baby. <laughs> Wall Street needs to see fat increasing profits and cash balance sheets that are growing and debts that, that is decreasing. That's the game. Put aside the narrative and trade where the money's flowing and it'll make you tons of money. That with a sharp eye on the charts like we've got here. Uh, you know, that's the way we're doing it, guys. All right, I'm going to cover NVIDIA. NVIDIA's had incredible bullish momentum. And currently, this particular candle formation is actually a very bullish candle formation. It's a very classic flag pattern. This is a descending channel. And so I don't really have any doubt that in the coming days, this is going to break higher to the upside and even get above $1,000. But we want to find out where we're going. Now, the other day, when we had this great big green candle pushing us higher, I'm looking at the two-day time frame. I told everybody, ignore it. Ignore it. Do not expect a breakout move. We're not going to $1,000 now. We haven't had enough time to digest this move. Guys, you have to understand the way that these things work. Price action needs to be digested. It needs to be processed. Momentum needs to be processed. Now, ultimately, I said we're going to get a failure here and we're going to come back to 838 and depending on how it interacts with the 838, 840 price range is going to tell us where it's going next. I said if we see it get lost on that time frame, let me switch to the daily time frame for this chart. There we go. That tells the story a little bit better, the story that I've been telling on NVIDIA. So right here, this little green candle, I said we need to see this green candle hold because if it doesn't hold above 840, and we actually get an open candle and a close and an open candle beneath 838. I said, forget about it. We're going lower. And that's exactly what happened. And I did tell everybody that I believed my bias was to the downside. So you see this Lux Algo support area right here. And that is telling us that max support is between 790 and really 770, okay? So I'm looking for a move right back into this range, which means that we simply have more room to the downside. Support at the moment is right around 769. The area that we're going to want to see it break above to begin a bullish move back is 833. But we are not going to get to $1,000 unless we get a close above 881. That's the top of our channel. And so we need to see it break above the top of our channel to begin to realize the potential of getting up to 1,000 or 1,100 on NVIDIA. We're clearly in a downward trend. It was confirmed uh, today. If we get another candle open and close Monday beneath 833, then in my mind, we have a clear path to below 770. That's what I'll be watching. And that's the area where I'll be looking to get take risk on NVIDIA to go for a move back to the upside. All right, so just let's keep things clear. I still see pressure to the downside. There's going to be some uh, fake out rips where people are gonna go long a bit too early. If you can take a step back, I talked about the fact that DJT is actually gonna be pushing up to test the upside. Tesla, Nvidia pushing down to test the downside. Bitcoin with the having fake out could have a little move to the upside, but ultimately lacks the momentum to break out. And so that little move will probably be a fake out. And I think that that's going to bring it back to 55K. And I think that the alts will come down with it. But then as Bitcoin stabilizes, we're going to see the alts through the next three months potentially have a strong move. And then eventually Bitcoin 
will join the alts and all of it will push higher once Bitcoin has the momentum and the legs to climb. So I know that's a ton of to digest. If you guys enjoyed these technicals and these breakdowns, complicated uh, technicals, I'm trying to make them as simple and clear as I can. If you guys want to follow along, I use TradingView. There's a link for TradingView in the description of this video. I use Lux Algo, which is very helpful. And for some who maybe need to give themselves a little bit of a break and use some of the tools that others have created to help them understand when something's at support or understand when something's at resistance. In my opinion, Lux Algo is perfect for that. I do my own charting, but then I turn on the Lux Algo and it gives me a little bit of a refinement of where things are mathematically because, you know, I'm putting my support and resistance lines in there, but Lux Algo works off of the algorithm. And so it's a little bit more accurate. And sometimes it is. You still have to interpret it correctly. And that's what I'm teaching. What you, what type of signals are you looking for between the candles and the RSI? You got to understand how it all works together. And that's why you want to hit subscribe because I'm laying it down. I'm sharing my years and years of technical experience and what I'm currently trading and what I'm looking at in the charts here on this page each and every day. Guys, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. You can find links to the tools that I use. I also use the Moomoo uh, investment app and they're gonna be giving away, I believe up to 10 fractional shares right now if you deposit 100 bucks and they're giving away a 5.1% interest rate. Check it out. You can also find me in the Stock Squad Patreon. That's where myself, Keenan Grace, Stock Mo, and Stock Up with Larry Jones are making trade alerts, providing technicals, and answering questions. I'll be getting in there later today. I appreciate you guys joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Make some money. Peace and blessings. Take care.